Hi guys, it's Alicia Loran, if it's your first time here, welcome. If it's not, thank you so much for joining. Um, I do want to say, because I have not said this yet, thank you guys so much for patiently waiting for a new video if you are a subscriber. Um, I have been away for a while and um, my videos have been a bit sporadic. First, I want to say that I do work a full-time regular job. YouTube is not my full-time job. I wouldn't say that that's my ambition in life. Um, I am a bit older than the average YouTuber and I do YouTube for fun and I do enjoy making videos, but when I have other things that come up in my life, they greatly outweigh um, my necessity to make YouTube videos. And I've had some very, very important family um, issues happening that were more of a priority for me and so that's why I've been away and it has greatly affected my mood and my ability to enjoy making YouTube videos so I had to step away from it for a little bit so um, what has happened recently was I realized I was happy -er when I was making videos and so I decided to just start filming and as soon as I filmed the first video, I was like, I want to film another video. So um, I kind of realized that this does help improve my mood as well. So I'm back. So um, today I thought that I would do something that I haven't done in a while. And I'm going to do a video where I share my uh, skincare, not skincare. This is a makeup routine. So this is the way that I have been applying the basis of my makeup. And I wanted to share it with you guys because I don't do a lot of these videos anymore where I really just go through and, and share what I'm doing because um, I feel like there's so many people on YouTube that are so good at makeup that you don't need another person telling you how to do it. However, I also feel like a lot of people on YouTube do YouTube makeup and they do, I'm going to say makeup. <laughs> <laughs> um, however, I feel like I do a variation of that. I feel like it's somewhere in between. This is makeup that I would wear if I was going on a date. Um, if I was going to hang out with my girls, I might do a little bit more or a little bit less depending on the situation. But the makeup that I'm going to show you, I would feel okay going out to the store in maybe less the contour. But, um... I just wanted to show you what I've been doing that I'm happy with and that I feel looks good on me recently. Um, so maybe it'll give you guys some tips and tricks that you would like to use. So I am going to be using some products that I've recently acquired. So um, I felt like this was a good way to kind of show you how those products work on different types of skin. So I do have on some skincare products. I've hydrated and all of that and that's why my under eyes are a bit shiny because I do have on some hydrating products. So I'm gonna start with a mattifying primer and I like to use a mattifying primer on my T-zone. So that's gonna be on my nose, on the sides of my nose and on my forehead. And the one that I like to use the most is the L'Oreal Magic Perfecting base and it comes in a little jar like this and I, I don't know how much this is I'm gonna find it and put it in the description box but I've had this for a really long time it's like a half fluid ounce um, but I like that this is matte without being too matte if I really really need to be matte then I'll put on my Becca um, perfecting uh, my Becca Poreless Primer, which is really intense, but this allows me to use a, a foundation that can be a little bit more dewy and not have an issue. So I just put that where I tend to be a bit more shiny. And then on the rest of my face, I like to use a regular primer. So today I'm gonna use the Too Faced um, Hangover RX Primer, which is new for me. And um, this one is just a slightly moisturizing primer, and I'm just gonna use that on my cheeks because that's really the only place where I might experience a little bit of dryness. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Too Faced Born This Way foundation today, which is, I would say, a natural to dewy foundation. And if you're extremely oily, you are going to have to use a extremely mattifying primer or pass on this particular foundation. I like this foundation because it looks very skin-like and because um, it looks skin-like. This is um, medium to full cut foundation coverage. I think that this is medium coverage, even with multiple, um, with layering this, I feel like I get medium coverage because it does not, not cover my hyperpigmentation. Um, so I am going to use a, a medium density brush, which I am going to dampen first. That's the way that I feel this applies best on me. And I am dampening my brush with the Too Faced Hangover 3-in-1 um, primer and setting spray. And I just like to do, like a pump and a half is really enough for me. And I just dab this on my face where I feel like I need the most coverage first. And then I just work this in with my brush. I am going to be using some of the brushes from the new um, Wet n Wild Holiday Collection. Um, this is like my second time using them. They're very similar to the collection that they put out last year. They have a few new shapes. Um, this one they call a blush brush, but I say use your brushes the way that you feel works best for you. And I like to use a medium density brush for applying certain foundations. This is not um, a super thick foundation and it's also not very thin. It's not gonna be super watery um, like um, my NARS, what do I have? I don't have Sheer Glow, I have the one in between. Um, but so it allows me to uh, apply really well with a brush. So I just like the way this looks. You're gonna get more coverage with a brush than you do with a sponge. And this is a little bit more golden than my natural skin tone, even though it looks very natural. And so I make sure that I take my brush over my ears and my neck. I'm going under my jawline. You wanna make sure that you work into your hairline. This is how you make sure that you get good coverage. Places where it's not naturally gonna go easily. I make sure I go on the sides of my nose in this little crease here um, to make sure that I'm really getting the foundation working that in there on the sides of my eyes. Underneath my eyes and stuff, it's not the biggest deal because I am gonna put concealer there, but I just wanna make sure that I'm not a different color on the sides of my nose and things like that um, than the rest of my face. So I do still have foundation left on the back of my hand. And I'm just gonna zoom in just a little bit. And the foundation that's left, I'm gonna apply that in the areas where I feel like I need a little bit more coverage. And that's really just places where I have a bit of hyperpigmentation. So, and that's mostly on my cheeks and my jawline because that's where if I do break out, that's where I'm gonna have a breakout. So, and then the second time that I apply this, I like to just pat it in rather than to brush it in and it helps to not move the product as much so I get a little bit more coverage. And I wipe the rest of what's on the back of my hand onto the brush and apply that to my face as well. And again, I am taking this down my neck and if any area of my chest is exposed that I make sure that I cover that too. The next thing I'm gonna do is because I have um, darker circles under my eye than most, I'm going to double layer my concealer. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to do a cream product that has more coverage and then I'm going to apply a liquid product on top of that. So I'm using the NARS Creamy Matte Concealer and 
I don't really like to stick my finger in my container. Um, so I use a brush to get some out and then I just pat this into place with my finger. I like the way that this looks when I do this. Now if I want less coverage, then I'll just apply this by itself. Sometimes in the summer I will put this on and nothing else and I'm the shade uh, caramel in this. And I'm using the shade Brulee in the Too Faced foundation. So I just pat that into place. And I make sure that I get into the corner of my eye because it is not very deep set, just a little bit deeper. And so that helps to brighten that area up as well. So before I go in with my concealer, I am going to contour. So you can really do this in the order that you feel comfortable with. Sometimes I'll go ahead and put on my second layer of con concealer. It really depends on what you feel comfortable with. And then I'm also going to, only because I'm out of the concealer that I really wanna use, which I ordered it, but I'm waiting for it to come. Um, I would really use a concealer that's a little bit darker to just go back over some of my darker blemishes because the NARS concealer, the caramel is just like a smidge too light. But once I blend it out, their products, it's not very noticeable. So I'm taking a dry sponge and I'm just feathering out the very, very light pressure where I've applied that because I don't want to remove the product, but I just want to take away any of the harsh edges from where I've applied that and it just helps to add a little more coverage. So for my contour, I am using a cream concealer. If you would like to intensify your contour, you can use um, a cream concealer and then you can use a powder or you can just use a powder. I like to use a cream concealer because for my skin, even though I am combination, I like the way that a cream, cream products are looking on me um, the older that I get. It just adds some nice dimension to the skin. So I like um, the way that this looks. I also like the way that this particular product looks layered with powder if I want to do that. This is the um, Amon Cosmetics uh, Stick Foundation and this is in the color Earth 2. I like this because it does have a bit of gray in it and I've been contouring a bit higher up on my cheekbone than I used to. So my cheekbone is here and I'm just gonna go right, right underneath it. So I'm really almost, I'm really, almost on, I really like on my cheekbone. So, and I just do a little tiny bit on my forehead, not a lot. And I also go on my jawline, because it's not very defined. I go right underneath my chin, and I go uh, under the tip of my nose, and I do a little tiny line on each side of my nose. And the way you know where your line should be here on the upper part of your nose, is it should be drawn to join your eyebrow. So, and I don't necessarily contour all the way down my nose just because um, I feel like just blending this down is enough. So, and then I like to take a small round brush. So I have a Real Techniques Del Deluxe Crease Brush and that's what I like to use to blend my nose. And I like to pat my product in instead of wiping it because it doesn't take away as much product um, as it would if I was to just swipe with my brush. So I just kind of pat this into the skin. And again, if I wanted this to be more intense, then I can use a powder product, but I don't want this to be super duper intense. like. I'm not, I'm not going to the clips, I'm about to be dark. <laughs> and it's getting yeah. dark. My son is in the doorway. 
<laughs> so you can make it darker if you're going to be in a darker environment. So it's, you know, you, it, you can get away with making it more dramatic, so. So, and I blend in two different directions on my jawline. I blend horizontally and vertically. So, and then on my forehead and my cheek, I go back into the patting motion. I don't wanna to move too much of the product that's underneath the contour as well, which is one of the reasons why the patting motion works so well. It doesn't take away what you already have there. So, and I like to turn my brush in a C motion, and this is one of the um, Wet n Wild contour brushes, and I like it because it's um, a narrow brush, and it's very dense, and I like the way that it blends without taking the product in a place where you don't want it to go. So if you use, um, you know, a contoured, you know, fluffy brush or something like that, you, it's not as easy to get an accurate shape. So a brush like this is really good for someone that is a beginner, um, or if you just want to get easily get the right shape, these brushes are great for that. For that. So, and then the reason why I've applied my contour higher than I used to is that it just lifts the face. So instead of drawing the eye downward and drawing the face downward, especially because I have a longer, more over sh oval shaped face, it just pulls the face upward. So I just make sure that I blend it the way that I want. I just kind of look at my face and it's also good to look at your face in more than one mirror too because it'll look different you know in a different mirror and different lighting than it does in another so in a really bright light it may look one way where i have all the studio lighting than it does in a smaller mirror where everything is not directly head on so now that i have my contour on i'm going to go on with my under eye concealer. With my under eye concealer, I don't, I maybe go two shades lighter. I don't go extremely light. I don't really like the way that that looks. I think it's too extreme. Um, but I do make sure that I go on the sides of my nose because this helps to narrow the nose. People always say, they wanna snatch their nose. I really wanna snatch my nose. Okay, me and my nose, we just kind of cool, okay? So this is what helps to narrow the nose even more. So you wanna go on the sides of your nose as well as under your eye. You don't need a ton of product because you are gonna blend that out. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of space from here, from the ends of where your eyes stop into, you know, where your hairline starts, you don't need a ton of product here because this is going, you have to blend this somewhere. Like where is this product going to go if you have a ton of it. That's why I'm not all the way down here into my cheek with this product as well. So, and then I like to do a little tiny bit right down the center of my nose to add a little more light. And this helps to narrow the nose even more. So, and I like to let this sit and set. And this is the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind um, concealer. I really like this concealer because it doesn't settle into the fine lines under my eyes and it does set so it's not really going to move so this will dry down so don't wait too long before you start to set this um, and again if you use a dry sponge then you'll get more coverage than if you use a damp sponge so depending on what you're looking for that's how you decide how to use your tool. You can set your concealer with a brush if that's your preference. I like setting mine with a sponge because I get more coverage, especially because I have the dark circles under my eyes. Um, also, if you have any dark areas on your face, um, for me, usually I'm a little bit darker just around my mouth. If you have any facial hair, quit acting like you ain't got none. 
okay? You know you got a mustache too, so <laughs> now, if you have one of those, one of the ways to help um, draw attention away from that is you can take your concealer and just apply a little bit of your concealer around that area. All right, so, um, and again, this is one of the, another reason why I don't use a concealer that's like three shades lighter than my face. Or if you like to use a lighter concealer under your eye, then for these other areas, just use one that's one or two shades lighter. So, and I just blend this out gently. So if it's almost time for a wax, this helps to minimize the look of that. Okay, now that I've blended out my face, I am going to set my under eye with powder and I have my Laura Mercier pressed powder and I'm just going to lightly add just a tiny bit of this powder underneath my eye and just the tiniest bit of this. And I'm just pressing this right underneath with a very soft brush. This is a Sigma um, E50. And I like it because it's, it's nice and white and it's fluffy and soft. So I can kind of just cover the whole area. Some people like to swipe. I don't like to swipe because I don't want to move the, powder, move the other products around too much. That's all the setting that I do. I don't want to use a lot of powder underneath my eye. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my brows and oh my gosh. everybody keeps asking me for a brow video, but I'm not doing anything like I do the same thing. I always do in my brows. Okay. So both of my brows are done now. Um, the last couple things that I do to my face is I put on a blush and when it's cold outside <laughs> and when it's dark <laughs> I like to wear my favorite blush from MAC which is format you can see that I hit pan and I'm still not gonna stop using this until it starts crumbling but I do have a backup um, and I just apply this on the upper parts of my cheek the same way I went higher with my contour, I go higher with my blush, and I usually put on way too much of this, but I don't care. So, and I also like to put this on the bridge of my nose, and right over where I apply my contour, it just ha helps to add a little bit more color to the face. I like the way that that looks. Adds a little help to the skin. So, and then, I do like to add a little bit of powder on my face, just a little bit, in the areas where I get a little bit shiny. So I have the Too Faced um, Born This Way powder and I have it in medium, which is almost my skin tone. And you can see I barely used any and I take my same sponge that I applied my powder, my, my concealer with, and I'm just gonna pat a little bit into my forehead. Just a little bit into my forehead. and around my small lines and then I'm going to just kind of dust off the excess here. So and then on my nose I'm going to use a lighter powder. So I'm going to use the Too Faced. this way but I'm going to use the lighter version and this is just because 
I'll get oily on my nose, but I don't want to use a lot of powder because um, I don't want to look dry. I definitely don't want to put it on my cheeks or anywhere else, so just only where I absolutely have to. So, and then I'm going to apply my highlight. And for my highlight, I usually like to use um, um, a, pointed contour brush, but I decided to try a fan brush because I've never really used one before. So this is from the Wet n Wild brush set. And I'm using the Wet n Wild um, Mega Glow Highlighting Powder. Um, this one is in Crown of My Canopy. I freaking love this stuff. I always put on like way too much because I don't really care. And I don't, when I put on highlighter, I don't highlight, highlight all the way down my nose because my nose is not that small. I don't want highlighter on the tip of my nose to like draw more attention and light to that area. I don't do that. So when you highlight, you wanna highlight the areas that you want to stand out and draw more attention to. So I highlight a lot on my cheekbone here, up above my cheekbone, as you can see. Um, but that's really the only place that I do that and I do on my cupid's bow and just a little bit here at the this part of my nose but not on the tip of my nose because I don't want you to see that part so um, then I am going to do a little bit with my eye and so I'm going to go in with I'm gonna go in, and I have my Natasha Denona uh, Safari palette. This is an all matte palette, because I love matte shadow. And I'm just gonna take uh, the color, uh, I really feel like I'm gonna drop this. Um, the color uh, Malia, which is a very pale, peachy pink. And I'm taking a, a large Royal Techniques targeted blending brush, and I'm just gonna sweep that over my entire lid. And this has, what is this? Oh, um, okay, don't be so goofy. So I just took a brush that had some shimmer on it and I'm like, oh, this has shimmer in it. Oh my God, no it doesn't. I think that when my sister was here, she grabbed one of my brushes. You know what this has on it? It has lime chrome from the Natasha Denona gold palette on it. but I couldn't see it on here. It looked like it, it was clean. That's weird. So now I have shimmer on my eye, even though I didn't want that on there. Weird. But, and then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a matte brown. So I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna take Thorn and I'm just going to work a little bit of this into my crease because I really just want this to be simple. And even when I'm doing a simple look, I can't like not contour my crease. That's weird.
And this is something that I'll do, like if I just, if I don't want to be really dramatic, but I don't want to be plain, I do a medium toned brown in my crease and I'll do nothing else. And then, um, you know, making sure I have an all over lid color, which I usually will pick something that's very close to my skin tone. Um, so out of the Safari palette, I could have used Tamarind. That's what I did the other day. It's really actually the color of my skin. So I'll show you guys. Maybe it'll cover the lime chrome that I applied earlier. It does. It's nice. So, and that's another thing. These colors really have great payoff. You can still see a little tiny bit of this shimmer that I didn't mean to apply, but... So that's really just skin tone. And then I'm applying the Too Faced um, Better Than Sex Mascara. It's not my favorite, but um, it's nice. And it's not as dramatic as my L'Oreal Lash Paradise. And the last time I bought Lash Paradise, I bought the waterproof version, which I don't really like. <laughs> Um, it's a little too dry and I don't like it as much as the regular. So this will do and don't get mascara all over your face. On. And then <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to do is I have Lorac. Um, this is their uh, highly pigmented lip gloss in Beauty Queen. And I just put this in the center of my lips and work it around. And that works great when I've already got like a bit of foundation and stuff from applying everything else on my face, but you know, really, if I was like a makeup guru, I would like go and like put on a really cute shirt and like some really big hoop earrings and stuff like that or whatever. And be like, that's the finished look you guys. And I hope that you enjoyed it. And like, you know, you could really do this. Like if you were going on a date and you wanted to like a really cute or like you wanted to like, this is like a totally like no makeup makeup look and stuff like that. And, but I ain't doing it. So, this is not a no makeup makeup look. <laughs> this is what it looks like if I want to wear makeup, but I don't want to put on a whole bunch of eyeshadow, but I want my face to look nice. So, this is what I would wear if I want people to be like, oh, you look cute. Okay. Um, but I would probably put on some earrings or something if I was leaving, but I'm not leaving. I'm going downstairs to hang out with my teenagers because nobody else is here. So, however, I do hope that this was useful. Like I said, it's been a while since I put up a makeup video where like I put on, put on makeup and was like actually kind of telling you what you should do, giving instructive, you know, verbal direction. So, oh, and I probably would put I would not put on lashes, so that's not true. I would put on mascara. This was like, I'm just gonna, whatever. So um, this is what you would look like. Um, and I probably would not leave my hair in these two braids like this or whatever. Maybe I would. I'd probably put on a, a head, head wrap and then that would be it and some earrings. So I hope that the video was useful and um, I hope to see you guys back the next time.